Hello, welcome to Batcast 66, it's a podcast where we watch every episode of the 60s Batman show and talk about it. Uh, today we are watching The Clock King Gets Crowned, it's the conclusion of the two-part Clock King episode. I don't know if he ever comes back, uh, I guess we'll have to see in the future. Uh, this one is episode 12 of the second season, episode 46 overall. And yeah, we already went through the creative team last episode, but it's the Bill Finger one. And we're having a great time, aren't we, Scott? Yes, we are, Kendall. Anything we need to talk about here at the top of the episode, or should we just get into um, it? Like you said, Bill Finger is one of the writers of this, the arguably biggest creative influence on Batman, um, which we went very much into in, in depth at uh, the beginning of last episode. So if you haven't listened to that, uh, you should listen to that. Um, you should also listen to that episode first because you know this is the second half of that story mm-hmm. in general. So that'd probably be the be- the, the recommended way to consume this. But yeah, uh, so let's get into this. Uh, Batman and Robin are stuck in the hourglass. The uh, the bad guys they were gonna watch the uh, sand suffocate them, but the time is of the eff- essence, and they can't be late for the next part of their whole deal. That kind of makes a lot more sense with Clocking than it does some other types of villains. Yeah, but uh, I, yeah, I buy I, him walking away. Yeah, I buy him. Being like, well, I've got the schedule to stick to. Like, you know. Yeah. So Batman and Robin, they don't have their utility belts. Um, they're like on a table or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're like, oh, how do we get out? And they shake this hourglass back and forth. Well, yeah, well, Robin originally does what I thought they would, like, what I would have done is take your cape and jam it into the, like, the the, the middle part of the hourglass. And then Batman points out they would still suffocate because there's, you know, they can't get air in there. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I actually did think, I was like, well, I would just jam my cape into it. <laughs> so it was, I was actually shocked when Robin said to do that. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, they rock back and forth. It knocks the hourglass over, but doesn't break it. Yeah. So Robin sensed something about being like squirrels stuck in a trap, which I, I don't know much about trapping squirrels. And then Batman's like, that makes sense. Let's roll it like we're in a hamster ball. And they like smash outside and they're just rolling around. And I'm like, what is happening? And then like a big truck hits them, and I guess breaks the glass. Yeah. Which is like, is he planning on that being the thing, or like just keep breaking through stuff and it not break? <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's very funny to watch. Yeah, so they're free. Uh, Meanwhile, everyone's favorite weird aunt, Aunt Harriet, is at police headquarters. Uh, Yeah, she's in Gordon's office with uh, Gordon and O'Hara. Yeah, and guess guess whose birthday it is? Oh, yeah, it's uh, Bruce Wayne's birthday. She's there to invite them to a surprise party. Yeah, it seems a little late, but... Yeah, it's like that night, right? Yeah, uh, but whatever. I guess uh, it really keeps the element of surprise. Here's a funny thing. I feel yeah. like this is the first time it's mentioned that either of these guys are married. Oh, yeah, because she mentions, yeah, bring them and uh, come and bring your wives, too. Yeah. I wonder if that was, like, thrown in because, like, you, you know, two men always together. I mean, her at work, at least. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess people would just assume they have wives because that was just the style of the yeah. time. But... I don't know. That's weird. Weird that it's just coming up, but whatever. It's fine. Uh, Batman calls and checks in, which feels kind of just like a waste of space. Well, so, I I thought it would be really funny if, you know, Aunt Harry was like, oh, Bruce has got a red telephone just like that. That would have been funny. But I guess she's not allowed in that room from last time uh, when Alfred's like, well, she's like, I'm not, I'm not supposed to go in there because you're the, the Morse code. Oh, yeah, yeah. From the. Uh, yeah. From the. From uh, the, the Ma Parker stuff. Yeah. But yeah, she's like saying things like. I guess like we get like a funny bit where she's just like, oh, like those two, they're so great. Or I guess it's supposed to be funny. I don't know. 
Yeah, well, she's talking about like she's talking about Batman and Robin being like, oh yeah, I tell Dick and Bruce about that they're like great or whatever for all the time. Yeah, I don't like this lady. I mean, I don't mind the act actress, but like the it, character, it, the character is just like weird. She doesn't she doesn't fit in with like the Wayne household dynamic. Yeah, she's like such a she's so strange. <laughs> and I'm not saying that like. You can't have like a woman live in their house. Because I know she's from the comics too. Dick Grayson having like an aunt makes him be King Bruce Wayne's ward much stranger to me. Like I know they've mentioned that like Batman's parents were killed as why he became Batman. But I don't think they at least so far they've never mentioned like why Robin is his ward. Yeah, I don't think they have. So I don't know if like I I definitely don't get the vibe he grew up in the circus in this one. Yeah, same. But um, so I, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, we uh, I feel like now we cut to Wayne Manor and Aunt Harriet is just there now. She's just like moved. I guess we're forward in time a bit. Yeah, well, she's showing like the clock that she bought Bruce for her birthday, his birthday, and what was it called? Uh, like a windmill clock, something like that. It's it's very weird looking. Yeah, it's a, bunch, it's a bunch of clock faces on like a windmill. I guess it's supposed to like rotate, you know, to time, which is kind of a cool idea. It's kind of cool, but I feel like if I were to use it as a clock, I'd be really annoyed because yeah. it's so much to like look at. No, oh, definitely. In terms of like time telling, like you know, I I like the really intricate like ones like we mentioned last episode, the, the one when it changes uh, hours. Like a lot of mechanical things come to life on it. Like that's kind of cool. But the actual, it only had like one clock face, you know? Yeah, it, it was pretty strange. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure you can make a cool idea out of it. I'm sure. Yeah, and apparently there's like, there are, not apparently, there is a camera in there. And yeah. Clock King, what a creep, first off. Yeah. Well, also it's like crazy that he had the potential to accidentally learn who Batman and Robin are. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't like go with that. Yeah. But I guess he would like, have to like die at the end or something. Yeah. It's like Bruce and Dick could have or and Alfred could have like you know Alfred could have been there like uh the bat phone like yeah. he did you know earlier. Yeah. Well yeah it's never don't get your hopes up listeners because it doesn't come into play. Yeah. Uh, well, of course not. Yeah. He's spying on them because he plans on stealing Bruce Wayne's valuable pocket watch collection. So I guess he just has. Yeah. Yeah. He just Because he's rich. Which, yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. It um, makes enough sense. We learn that one of the second hands, uh, they messed up and the clock that they left, that they gave to Aunt Harriet had a, a little button on it. The automatic energy directional control switch. I think it is it atomic? Yes. <laughs> the, uh, I was like, oh my god, because it's meant to use for like this device that they have for their final caper. Um, so it kind of changes his plans. Was like, well, we need like this is more important. We need to go there and get that button back. The dynamic duo are in the, the back cave and they're oh yeah, this was great. Uh, they're like analyzing uh, a name or something that Smith. Yeah, yeah, that they picked up along the way. Um, meanwhile, like they start robbing uh, the upstairs like living room set. Yeah, and they keep going. Meanwhile, and just flipping back and forth, back and forth. I loved it. Yeah, it was very like it almost felt like a parody of the show. Yeah, and like of like comic books also. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, I enjoyed it. Yeah. But yeah, they like knock Alfred out with like a blackjack. Uh, and then do they just take in Harriet like hostage yet? Or is that like when they're like leaving? Yeah, they, they decide they're going to take her as like insurance that they get away because they grab, they grab their clock. Yeah. And he like manages to get his hands on the pack of watches. Yeah. They're on display not too far from that. Yeah. 
which I guess lucky, lucky him. Lucky him, yeah. Uh, Alfred comes to and like sounds the alarm. So like Batman and Robin come back up the poles. Oh yeah, Al Alfred has a and his belt buckle has like a little alarm button for the Batcave, which is pretty cool. It's pretty awesome, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's when Batman and Robin realize something's up. So they take the bat poles like jetpacks up, which transforms them back into Bruce Wayne and Dick uh, Grayson. Yeah. Um, I thought they were going to roll up as Batman and Robin. Yeah, that would have been harder to explain. I kind of wish well, we could bigger. They were fun. just Batman and Robin were just uh, they were on pursuit of Clock King. And like Clock King's here. That's true. You know, that's all you needed. But I kind of wanted to see a fight out of costume. I kind of did too. We almost did. We all it like kind of started and then like stopped before it got going. They were like, "You can have pocket watches," and like they like left because they needed the clock. They they had bigger fish to fry. Yeah. And then Robin's even like, "Why don't we pursue them?" He's like, "By the time we got." To the Batmobile, they'd be like long gone. I was like, that's eh, plausible enough. Well, I mean, he could have broken the speed limit, but who am I to say? I mean, to go, I don't know how long it actually takes them to like transform in their costumes and stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah, it doesn't really get into how that works. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they're wearing their civilian clothes underneath of that. Uh, I guess I assume it's... that they are. I was like, I don't know. It's weird. I don't I... think so. Yeah. But anyway, Aunt Harriet's all out of sorts. Yeah. And she said she's like, Oh, imagine me being a hostage. And it's like, like that happened already. Yeah. Weren't you like dangling over like boiling oil or wax or something? Yeah, wasn't it like a pit of fire or something? Something crazy. It was, was it Zelda the Great, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh the best, the best one. Yeah. Um, back in the, in the back cave, the, the back computer spits out a bunch of like different Smiths and, you know, Batman's kind of like, oh no, it's not this Smith. It's not this Smith. Yeah. They're all like accounted for in like prison or whatever. Yeah. So now I've talked about it before. We go down this like crazy line of thought that just like is improbable, but correct yeah so, so what does robin say that triggers it well he says something about like um he mentions this one guy who like breaks stones with a hammer or something yeah because yeah. he's he, that's what he's doing in prison now yeah and like so batman's like oh like a a smithy would use a hammer and then they're like oh there's the clock tower that's like blacksmith themed yeah there's like a blacksmith that like strikes an anvil when you know clock strikes five or whatever yeah and then like they like somehow deduce that there's a heliport at like an adjacent building yeah across the street from it and then they're like oh like let's call gordon and see if anything's supposed to be delivered there yeah there's a cesium clock yeah and it's meant to land at exactly five o'clock yeah, and I was like, "Is it cesium because like you seize it because he's a villain?" Mm. That's why I can remember what it was. The clock king and his gang they get to the clock tower, and so yeah, his bomb is supposed to be on the the anvil that the the mechanical smith is supposed to hit, and that would like send some sort of like wave across the street that would like allow them to steal this thing. I'm like, that seems a little convoluted. It's so convoluted. <laughs> but like, I also feel really bad for the actor that was playing the Smith who's dressed up in gold because it's clearly just a guy that's got to stand there perfectly still. Yeah. Yeah. Like they don't have like clockwork people. It's just normal people playing that. Yeah. It's probably cheaper and quicker to then actually make making a prop. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know. Even though they just got there and Batman and Robin had to like figure it out after calming down Aunt Harriet, I assume. Yeah. B Batman and Robin are like right behind them. Yeah. So we get a battle in this space. Pretty cool. It's a pretty fun battle. They use a lot of like the clocks, like stuff. Like 
they have that smithing because it's five o'clock strikes like at, right after they were able to like get rid of the bomb. I think someone throws the bomb at Batman and Robin. <laughs> but yeah, so this clock starts working and there's like different figures and stuff like, you know, it rotates in and around. And it's pretty fun. Uh, you know, people like have the hammer like smash them. There's one part where like Batman replaces like one of the figures on it and like it stands still and like it ticks around to one of the bad guys and then he get, punches them. Yeah, that like, was I don't cool. know. It's fun. Yeah, I I like this this fight. But it's yet another fight that the Clock King sits out of. So I don't know if like maybe that actor just wasn't going to be in one of the fights or like wasn't able to be in one of the fights or something. Yeah, he's like hiding behind Millie. Yeah, hiding behind Millie second, and she's not in it because she's a woman. Yeah. So yeah, like the goons are easily dispatched, and Clock King is captured. Uh, yeah. We cut to- we got to Gordon's office, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, they're t- everyone's patting themselves on the back for a job well done, uh, which I assume cops really do. And, yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, and then yeah, Gordon's like, "Oh, Batman, do you want to come to Bruce Wayne- Wayne's surprise party?" And obviously, he didn't know about it, and he was like, "Well, I was like, oh, they just ruined the surprise." Yeah. So I thought that was pretty funny. And yeah. obviously Batman can't make it. But. Yeah, he gives some excuse why he can't go. Um, but yeah, uh, it was cute. So what did you think of this overall? Oh, I, I had a lot of fun with these ones. I did too. I think I liked Ma Parker a little bit more, but I did like this one. Yeah, I, I think like this one like kind of like lost me in the second episode when they're like revealed the master plan. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah, I, it, I don't know. I, I did like the first half a little bit more. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the whole thing. It was it was yeah. a lot of fun. You know, overall, this is like the kind of story I'm into this show for. Yeah. Uh, but of course, we don't rate whether or not we like it. We just rate whether or not we think the villain's plan was any good. Um, I think it was okay. I like that he had kind of like three plans. Yes. That were all related to his gimmick and like his first one he pulls off, he gets away with that painting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he obviously stole the jewels in the very beginning. Yes. Um he would have probably gotten away with the the Bruce Wayne heist if his goon didn't screw up his like switches. Yeah. Um, probably. Yeah, his third plan was I didn't really get it. But like I'd be comfortable giving him a two. I would give him a two too. That's what I was yeah. gonna say. Like it wasn't yeah. complete nonsense, but like well, it kind of fell apart at the end when it yeah. to not. All right. Yeah. So that's that guy, Clock King. Pretty cool. I wonder yeah. if he'll be back, you know? Uh as far as I could tell, no, but I don't really know for sure. Because yeah. like, he is he is in the comics quite often. He's one of like the recurring like villains in Brave and the Bold. Um, I know he's in the Harley Quinn show. Uh, he and Riddler are like an item in that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's cute. Um, Generally yeah. speaking, I do like Clocking of his overall. I do think he's a character you can't go to the well like too uh, too much. Yeah, like, in, in general, he's a fun sure. part of like Batman. It's the same reason like I like Calendar Man. It's like it's very it's such a highly specific gimmick. It kind of forces you as a creator to be creative about sure. how you think about them and use them. Yeah. I'm excited to see him pop up in related Batman 66 media. Since yeah. we, we plan on getting to all of it. Yeah. Eventually. I know basically every character is in like as like a background cameo in one of the animated movies. Oh yeah, probably. I haven't seen either of them, so I'm I'm saving them for the podcast. Cool, that's fun. I like them. Yeah, I've heard I heard they're good. Like if I like, I like the show, which I do, then I would like them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, it's our first two of the season. Our first two of the season. Yeah. For like, terms of the plan, like Archer got one. Everyone else got three so far. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I get what you mean. I thought yeah. you meant that like these episodes were the first of the season i was like no these are these are the 11th and 12th of the season yeah anyway um got it 
We yeah. still got a lot of season two. Uh, next week's a pretty exciting one. Yeah. Wait, who? Uh, well, don't tell me. Well, yeah, if you don't know, then yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the classic Batman 66 characters. Cool. I'm excited. By a very, a, a, a very, very entertaining actor. Oh, okay. I know who it is. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I'm very excited for that. Um, yeah. So yeah, season two, season two starting to get a lot better. It, like I said, it, we said earlier, it had a very rough start. Yeah. Yeah, like the I hated the Archer, and who was the other guy like him? The Minch- Minstrel. Yeah. Yeah, they were episode. They were episodes one and two, and five and six. Yeah. But the Catwoman ones in between that was really good. So I was like, and then Todd after that was good. And I was like, okay. I was afraid we were going to get like missed and hit. But like the last couple have been pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It was like what? Tut, Parker. There's Tut, then Ma Parker, then Clock King. All right. Cool. All right. Well, I'm excited for next week. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Please join us. Same backcast time, same backcast channel. Yeah.